you and I have talked a lot about William and his work ethic and, um, you know, just how much he puts into it. Knowing all that, did you ever have any doubt on Sunday that he was going to make it into the final four? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, Sunday I did. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, that was a nail biter. I, you know, we, he's won that race before and, and, you know, we've, we've been so good at Martinsville and that was a struggle. And, uh, you know, it, it was just a touch, it was a tough race. And as it played out, you know, when, once we could see that, that probably the 12 was going to win and, uh, we had to finish it. I think 18th the better. We were in good shape, but uh, not the way we wanted to finish that race. How do you feel now? You've got two chances. Um, do you like either one of them better than the other? Are you, you know, how, how do you prepare the two of them? You really expect me to answer that? I do. I do. <laughs> well, listen, uh, both of them have had a great year. When you look at William has, has won six races and Kyle four plus the all-star race. Um, you know, we've taken two good cars and uh, William won that race in the spring. So um, we're, we're just happy to be in the race. We're happy to have two cars going out there for the, the race for the championship. Uh, both cars have, have run good all year. And, uh, you know, I hope that one of them can win. And uh, I don't see that either one has any more advantage over the other guy because, if if anything, William did win the spring race. So, uh, but you know that doesn't make any difference when you go back. So, um, I think we're our guys are prepared. We're going to go out with the best cars we have, and a lot of uh, attention to detail, and try to execute a race without any mistakes. And that's what you got to do. I mean, you got to have have to have good pit stops, and cautions have to fall the right way. Uh, you know, you can be a dominant car and not win this race. So we just got to run the race. And uh, just, again, when you start the year, you want to try to get cars to the championship four. And when you can get one or two, you've, you've had a great year. So uh, very happy that we're, we're going to be there with these two guys and we'll see how it works. Yeah, Rick, uh, there hasn't been a driver raised in North Carolina who's won a championship since Dale Jarrett in 99, as far as the cup side goes. I'm curious, does William could be the first since then? And yeah. do, does it matter? Well, you know, it, I think uh, to have a guy like William that grew up here in Charlotte that uh, is kind of a native of the Charlotte market where all the teams are based, uh, I think it would be a great message or for him to win the championship. But, you know, I don't think where you're from makes any difference, really. Uh, uh, where you live now is what counts. Kyle's here and uh, Blaney's here. And, you know, it's, uh, and, and now Christopher Bell's here. So it's, it's um, maybe it's bragging rights for the States, but I, I don't see any difference. I mean, it's, you know, they're all living here now and racing in NASCAR. So, uh, I think William's age, I think his story would be really a big story. If you take a kid that didn't grow up in the sport, that had no connections in the sport, that was able to go to college and do all the things he has done, learning how to race on a computer. I think that is kind of like when Jeff Gordon came on the scene and opened the door for a lot of open wheel guys. I think what this can do for a lot of kids that are from anywhere in the country or the world that racing on a computer, there's opportunity to get in the right spot. So I think William is a great example for a lot of kids or young people that have a dream of racing in this sport uh, that, you know, he's seen that you can put those tools to work and, and accomplish something pretty, pretty spectacular. Rick, do you think it makes a difference whether you've been in it before or won a championship before? You have, say, a William Byron that is relatively new to this, and it is such a big task, yet he's very talented. And you have Kyle Larson and, you know, folks that have been in it before, Larson's won a championship. Does that make a difference in your mind? You know, I, I, I really don't think so. Um, the nerves are there for both guys. 
I was just with Cliff out in the shop a few minutes ago, and you can see the intensity that's there. Um, you say, well, you know, you've been there before. It's um, uh, it's kind of the way this thing plays out. You got to go run one race, and once they strap in the car, everybody uh, that's got a car in this race is going to do the very best they can to take the best best car they've got with all the, the information that they can gather to be ready for this race. And I think, uh, I don't think it's any more pressure for William this weekend than it was last weekend and uh, just trying to make it into the race. So um, I've seen Jimmy Johnson after winning four straight as nervous as he was and Chad going into the, the next, next race. So I don't, I think the organization has the experience of running for a championship. So he's surrounded by four crew chiefs and four drivers and an organization that's been there before with Jeff Andrews, and Jeff Gordon, and all of the folks that support the team. So I think we give them all the moral support, but preparation here and trying to call a good race and just execute. And uh, I think uh, when you look at Rudy, He's as good as there is in the sport, and so is Cliff. So I think that um, they're prepared, and once he straps in the car, I think getting ready to go, uh, all the, the conversations and interviews going into the race, the pressure of knowing you've raced the whole year. And for William, he's raced his life, and here's a shot to win a championship. I mean, yeah, that's going to be more pressure, a lot of pressure, and for sure, Kyle's won one. So. It's not his first, but uh, again, I watch these guys when they get ready to go into a one race deal. Uh, the nerves are there, and uh, but once they get in the car, I think uh, everybody will be ready to go. I'm glad you said that about Jimmy and the nerves, because some had said that William, and no discredit to him, had a sense of panic almost on the radio, and that he almost panicked there. But that's what you get when you're thrown into that, and what you'll face coming up. He will not have to face the likes of Martin Shrex Jr. and Denny Hamlin, and they're all relatively young guys. What do you think of that? Well, uh, yeah, I think um, well, William is is very mature for his age, and he's come a long way in a short period of time. And to be a, a, a champion at his age uh, or, or win more races than anybody has this year uh, shows his talent and the, the talent of that team. I think, you know, every experience is a learning experience, but I, again, I go back to watching Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, uh, get ready for, uh, you know, I, I, luckily I like the old, I guess this is not fair to say, but I like the old system better where you can win at a, a race before the end of the year and you don't have to go down to one race, uh, with four cars. But uh, we know that we're having to battle two really good teams with a lot of momentum. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just an honor to be in it and to have the two cars in it. And I'm so, again, I'm, everybody gives Kyle a tremendous amount of credit as one of the best that ever sat in any kind of car. William's kind of been under the radar for a guy that's won six races and, uh, you know, had a ch chance to win the regular season a championship um, for him to accomplish what he has. He's kind of been under the radar. Nobody has talked about him a lot. And, uh, but if you look at what he's been able to do, it's pretty impressive. And at his age uh, and the chemistry between him and Rudy, uh, I think there will be a lot of championships in their horizon. Thank you. And good luck, Rick. Good Thank luck. you. Thank you, Claire. All right, our next question will go to Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. Hey, uh, Rick, I I'm just curious, going back to 2016 when you signed, August of 2016 when you signed William Byron, looking back at that point, you had Dale Jr. on your roster, and I know that was the season he was hurt, so Alex Bowman was running some races. You had Chase Elliott's rookie year, Casey Kane and Jimmy Johnson. So, um you had uh, you had a couple of young guys already, and you had Alex in, in kind of in a place. What led to you know going after William? I know he had that great; he was having that great truck season. But yeah. as you looked and planned, how? Why did you decide to to make the move at that point? 
You know, the thing about William I was so impressed with was how quick he learned and what he did in late models and what he did uh, in, in, in the, uh, you know, the legend cars, everything he got in. But more than anything, his determination to have a goal and go after it. I mean, for when I, what blew me away with William was the fact that he, he won that, I guess, the k and Series championship, became an Eagle Scout, graduated Country Day, which is the toughest school, private school in Charlotte, took college courses at the same time, did all that in the same year. I remember a weekend, I, I kept up with William through my neighbor that was a friend of his dad. He said, can you believe that kid raced on, on Saturday or Sunday, got in a car, went to the mountain, slept in a tent at eight degrees, uh, to get his Eagle badge. And I, I, when, when I looked at him and watched him and, and what, remembered what he did at JRM and uh, how confident he was when he walked up to me one day when he was like 15 and said, I'm going to drive for you one day. He just had the whole package. And I just felt like you put him in the right spot and give him time, he's going to develop into something really special because he's a special guy because he has got what uh, a, a drive and determination. You, you see him, you think he's a mild-mannered little guy and he doesn't have, you know, he, he's not a killer instinct. His determination to succeed uh, and his willingness to work hard and his willingness to put in the extra hours and to spend time in a simulator and when nobody else wants to do it or they've done it, they don't need to, the time's open, he'll take it. Uh, his, his, his work ethic is so uh, impressive. And I just felt like, you know, if he was in the right spot with the right people, he was going to do great things. And, and, you know, it's turned out to be that way. Were there reservations with moving him up to cup in 2018, considering, I mean, look, he had great success at lower levels. So uh, he'd shown some success, but obviously there's always the question, do you move somebody up quickly and throw them to the wolves and let them learn? And, and this is a tough place to do at the cup series, or do you give more time to learn the trait? You moved him up quickly. Why so in the reservations? Yeah. Well, you know what I have, I'm probably a little different from a lot of people. I think you can leave them in Xfinity too long. I think, you, you know, you learn a lot. But if that's if, if where are you going to spend your time? I look at Ty Gibbs as an example. Ty, it was ready for him, Ty, to move up. I mean, he won, the, he won a championship. William did, too, in Xfinity. But if you're going to drive with those guys, you might as well put them out there and let them learn and know that they're going to make some mistakes and they're not going to be as aggressive. And uh, William showed me again that he's willing to give what the you know take what the car will give him and learn and then and when he makes a mistake his restarts weren't that good and uh things he had to learn to pass he had to get the respect of all the guys out there but you know i, I kind of done it with chase I did it with jeff I did it with jimmy and uh our 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 kind of track record has been if the guy's got talent and he's spent a year or two in Xfinity and he's 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 won and run up front, then uh, if he's going to end up in Cup, put him in there and let him learn and let him learn where he's going to be racing and gain the experience and get the respect of the guys around him. And and William didn't come in roughing up people or he he raced everybody clean and people have, have a lot of respect for him and. Uh, and he's uh, he's earned it, and I, I think had it to do over, I'd do it that way again. Uh, and sometimes you might make a mistake, but if the guy's got talent, you might as well put him in the ring where he's going to have to live. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right, our next question will go to Jordan Bianchi. Go ahead, Jordan. Hey, Rick. Uh, looking at Cliff Daniels, when you, the decision was made to pair him with Jimmy Johnson in, in 2019, why, why was he the right crew chief for Jimmy then and not necessarily the right crew chief for Jimmy when Chad moved on? Oh, man. I, I think, uh, you know, you want a guy to mature and you, you want them to, you want to see what they can do. And you, you, you're a good team engineer and you think you're ready and you want to be 
put them in the right spot. But I think, um, you know, hindsight's pretty, pretty, uh, it's easy to look back and say, wish I'd done it then. And, and, and knowing how good Cliff is and how quick he learned and how quick he matured and how he became a, a leader, uh, it was been so impressive. And, uh, hindsight I probably would have done something different but at the time we thought that was a thing to do and uh, uh it's just like it's a crapshoot sometimes when you move a guy uh in, in the crew chief position that can be a great engineer but can they lead a team can they lead people and you don't really know that until you put them in that position and then you see what they're capable of doing uh, being a crew chief in this sport today is a lot more than just being a guy that understands a car, you've got to be able to lead the people around you. You have to have the respect to the people that, that are in the organization. You have to use all the tools that are around you, and it takes time. I'm probably slower moving a crew chief than I am the drivers, as we talked about a minute ago. But, uh, yeah, but looking back, uh, Cliff was I, – I, you just don't know how a guy is going to – uh, blossom as a leader and I mean that's that's the key in this sport I think for, for a good crew chief I go back to uh, Steve Latart. Steve Latart probably wasn't the smartest guy on in the organization as knowing the car uh, but as a leader and as a motivator and as a guy that could make everybody from a pit crew to the driver to the engineers all work together he was a master. So uh, you got to learn all, you, you've got to be able to do all those things. And I think uh, we probably just, that's one reason we didn't move him any quicker than we did. And that was probably a mistake. And then when the decision was made to keep, uh, to pair him with Kyle Larson, what was the impetus behind that decision? Even though, I mean, necessary Cliff maybe didn't have the level of success you were, you were seeking, you know, prior. Well, I think it, it was, it was, it was, it was time to move him, and the and the, and the opening was there. And uh, bringing Kyle on, Kyle had uh, a lot of experience driving all kinds of cars, and uh, we felt like that that was just a good combination at the time. And, and there again, uh, did not know the leadership skills that Cliff had, and the, that we 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 could see the drive and the desire. But he was a little bit more subdued as a as an engineer than he was and he has been as a crew chief. So um, you know, it, it when when you got a champion like Jimmy Johnson, you 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 try to make sure that you put the right person with them and you don't want to make a mistake. With Kyle, we just felt like Cliff had shown he was he was ready. And boy, that's an awesome combination as it's proven to be. Uh, two very, uh, Cliff is a very intense guy, and Kyle is a little bit of a laid back guy, but you, but they click and they, the, the, the marriage there has been a very good one, and they, they like each other, respect each other, and uh, they want to work together, and that's, you know, that's the secret sauce in this business. There, sometimes you put two together, and the chemistry just isn't there, and uh, it, it has worked with uh, these two. Thank you. Yep. All right. Our next question will go to Kelly Crandall. Go ahead, Kelly. Thank you. Hey, Rick. You were saying a minute ago about how big a story you think William's story would be if he won the championship. You also expressed how impressive his season's been and maybe even under the radar. When you look at Sunday, if he's able to win the championship, do you think that would be just as big a deal that a driver who arguably has been maybe the best driver all season when you look at the statistics can cap it off and win the championship in this format kind of like what Kyle did in, in 2021 yeah I think I think I think it's going it to be a huge story I think I think William Byron's story in general is just a very impressive one and I think the fact that he has had the kind of year he's had uh, and if he can go out there and win the championship at uh, his age and his uh, level of experience in the sport shows his talent and Rudy's talent and their chemistry. And uh, I, I just think, 
I think William is a good poster child. I don't want to say poster child, poster guy maybe for uh, a lot of young people that have ambitions to be in racing or any sport that you want to work as hard as he's worked to get there. And uh, with not a whole lot of, uh, you know, help from a lot of different people. I mean, he, he did it on his own. He, he, he knew what steps he needed to take and he, he did it and uh, super confident in his ability and, and just a good person too. I mean, for a guy that represents the sponsors well, that uh, squeaky clean, um, but aggressive when he needs to be and just a good person. And you don't have to apologize for anything with him. And I think that's one of the reasons he's kind of been on the radar. He's not outspoken. He doesn't run his mouth. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't go out and rough people up and he, he's done it in a very professional way. And I think, uh, I think it would be a tremendous story if a, a kid that it started at 14 or 15 years old on a computer can end up marching through the truck series and Xfinity series and then the cup series and cap off a year where he won more races than anybody did and win the championship. I think it'd be a really great story for NASCAR and a lot of the fans. Thank you. All right. Our next question will go to Jim Utter. Go ahead, Jim. Hey, Rick. How are you? I'm so far. I'm sorry. I can't answer any questions from Jim Hunter. <laughs> You're a bad man. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. Right. Doing, Jim? Um, so last year we had the introduction of the next gen car. Is this year the introduction of our next generation of cup champions? Well, I, 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 <laughs> I think what this, I think this what kind of shows you is um, that any, I won't say anybody, but there's, there's probably 10 or 15 guys out there in the right position that could be in these, this playoff and be one of the guys in the final four. Um, you know, you look at the talent of the people out there and the equal, the way this car is equalized to feel. And you know, on any given day, you see organizations that rise to the top and uh, they'll, you know, Stuart Haas will be at four cars in the top 10 or, or Gibbs will have three cars and four cars in the top 10. Uh, Penske, all of us. And, th and then all of a sudden you see Mike McDowell or people win races. And uh, uh, I, I think that it opens the sport up. And I think that's what Jim France wanted and what NASCAR wanted and the fans wanted to equalize the field and, and see multiple people have shots to win races. Um, and I think, uh, I think this, this, this car, uh, is taking a lot of the, uh, engineering tricks or all the, the, the different things that teams were able to do, uh, to gain advantage away from everybody. And this is the car, you know, we're, we're basically racing the same car. When you, when you look at the motors, they're all pretty close. I mean, they're within three or four horsepower of each other uh, from Toyota Ford to Chevrolet. So uh, the advantage in the sport today is pit crews, uh, having a really good pit crew that's fast, uh, calling the guys, calling the race and not making any mistakes. And uh, how many times this year we've seen uh, restarts where a guy's leading all day and then all of a sudden there's a caution that comes Here's a restart, and the guy that was six or seven ends up winning the race. I mean, that uh, the 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 wild card today is is restarts and you know getting track position and whether you get it with two tires, no tires, fuel only, whatever you do. You know, we've been fortunate this year to win, like I said, eleven races, and uh, in some of those races we were in the right spot at the right time. Some of the races we dominated, but. Uh, uh, you know, I think I think what you've seen with all the winners and how many people were in the uh, you know the 16 car playoff. Uh, I think I think NASCAR is getting what they want with a car, and it's uh, it's it's making the field more equal than it's ever been. A quick follow up. Obviously, you're familiar with uh, Kyle and uh, William, and 
believe that they could win championships, but I'm sure you're fairly familiar, obviously, with Ryan Blaney and Christopher Bell. Any surprise for you to, that they've reached this point in their careers either? No, not at all. I mean, Christopher Bell is a heck of a talent. Uh, I, I watched him in his, in his France and the midgets and watched him race. And he's got an awesome amount of talent. And Joe Gibbs has got a – his organization is one, is the, one of the best. And, and the same with Ryan Blaney. I think he's one of the most talented guys out there. And, uh, and, and the Penske organization, Roger and, Roger, Roger and Joe both are good friends of mine. And uh, that, they're, they lack for nothing. I mean, they're, they're, they're the best. And Blaney is, is, is as good as anybody out there. And so is Christopher. So I don't know of any, you know, I hate to have to race those two, but because uh, they definitely are going to be hard to beat. But they're, 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 I'm not surprised at all that they're there. Thank you for answering my questions. Yes, sir. Anytime. <laughs> all right. Our next question will go to Trey Downey with MRN. Go ahead, Trey. Hey, Rick, when Kyle won his championship a couple of years ago, we talked a lot about what it meant for the five cars to be back to prominence. If William's able to close it out and win the championship this weekend, it'll be 22 years since Jeff's last championship in that car. What would it mean for the organization as a whole for the 24 champ for the 24 to be champion again? Yeah, the, I, th I, rem I remember when we won the 100th race with the 24. Uh, the 24, we won our first championship, and uh, you know that's a that's a number that uh, everybody here uh, is close to everybody's heart. So to see that that car win again is super special. I think we've seen uh, Chase win with the car number nine that he means so much to him, and of course the five was our first number. Kyle's won a championship with it. To see the 24 back in victory lane and winning a championship with, uh, with, with William is going to be special. I kind of know who Jeff Gordon's probably pulling for, but, uh, but anyway, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it is special because that number has meant so much to us. And of course, what Jeff's done with it. So it would be very, very special to see the 24 in victory lane Sunday. Thank you. 